Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Father, we bless you. I thank you because this is another time to be in your presence. And Lord, as we gather online and some of your children be gathering, oh God, on ground, I thank you because you are everywhere, wherever we are. Thank you for your word. You have prepared package for us tonight and the blessings you have packaged for our coming, O God, to you tonight shall not be in vain. Take all the glory and all the honor, Lord, for being in charge over this meeting. Thank you, Lord, for being in charge over the internet. Thank you for being in charge over the power supplies and the devices of your children, O God. Father, I thank you, King of glory, for the blessing you have released. Thank you for instructing us in your word, even by your Holy Spirit. It is my prayer, mighty God, that as many, O oh God, you are connected from around the world to be part of this meeting tonight, will not be part of it for nothing or in vain in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord, you will touch every soul and meet everyone at their point of need, O oh God, that your name may be glorified. I yield myself to you, Lord, that, Father, you will speak through me, and do what you want to do tonight, O oh God, through me as a vessel that you yielded to you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy and mighty name for answer to this prayer. Because I prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Welcome again to another time in God's presence. Hallelujah. God has something great for us. Amen. All right, so... Call your friends, share the page, call members of your family, household together. Let everyone be ready to hear, amen, and receive the blessing that God has packaged for us. The entrance of God's word surely brings light, and light will shine into our hearts, into our lives tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So begin to call your friends, share the page, yes. Invite people to be part of this meeting. Hallelujah. To be part because God surely will bless us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay, so let us go. We'll continue with uh, the same subjects we, we started about. This is the third session. That's about three weeks, two weeks ago. This is the third, third week. Well, okay, that's the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Child of God, I want to let you know, even from Scripture, that forgiveness and the word on forgiveness are two powerful forces that can affect someone's life, either positively or negatively, depending on which side you are operating from. Forgiveness and unforgiveness. There are two powerful forces. But sometimes we take those words, we take them very lightly. We think they are just, oh, forgive now, forgive. Oh, you know. We don't take them very lightly, but they are very powerful. Very powerful, even as we have seen in the scriptures. You know, forgiveness will affect your life positively. Forgiveness will affect your life positively. Why not forgiveness will affect your life negatively? To forgive people who offend you or hurt you is to live in peace with yourself, with the people around you, and also with God. So somebody who is living a life of forgiving people, a life of forgiveness, is sure to be at peace with himself. Is sure to be at peace with God. Is sure to be at peace with everybody around him. Why? Now listen, why not to forgive? That in other words, why to live in unforgiveness is to live in bitterness when you are praying or dwelling on forgiveness. What be going on in your heart is bitterness towards the person you have not forgiven. You know, so to live in unforgiveness is to live in bitterness and malice, thereby troubling yourself. That's a negative effect, you know, of unforgiveness. You'll be troubling yourself and most likely troubling the people around you. 
you know and at the same time there's a bad aspect of it at the same time you'll be looking for enemies you know you'll be looking for enemies or maybe even binding the imaginary you know enemies that are troubling your life not knowing that you are your own enemy not knowing that you are your own enemy because sometimes the reason why people uh, dwell in unforgiveness is this issue of claiming i am right he is wrong she is wrong you don't know what he said you don't know what he did <laughs> well if we claim our right all the time child of god <laughs> We will not do the things we are supposed to do because if you are claiming your rights and looking at the other person that is wrong you will hold your place and you will stand your ground in one place you are not going to be able to move because you are going to be depending and waiting until the person comes to say sorry you know i'm not going to leave here until he tells me sorry well you see you'll be troubling yourself hindering yourself and again, in the sight of God, you'll be living in sin at that time. God wants us to forgive people who offend us. God wants us to forgive people who offend us or hurt us so that we can also be forgiven and our prayers will not be hindered. Unforgiveness, we have seen in the scripture, hinders prayers from being answered. And nobody will want to pray and don't want to get results or get answer to his prayer or her prayer. When you pray, you won't go to hear, you won't go to answer you. When you keep on forgiveness, when you dwell in unforgiveness, you are putting a stud, you know, you are putting a stud to your prayers. You are putting a cloud of darkness between you and God. So that your prayer, unforgiveness will stop your prayer from getting to God. Thank you, Jesus. So it is important that we learn, child of God, to forgive. Not like I said, you know, the word forgive, forgiveness, many times we don't look at it as it's a very simple and easy word. But they are very powerful. They are very, very powerful. Some people have ruined their life because they were dwelling on forgiveness. Some people lost their life because they were dwelling on forgiveness. Do you understand that? Some people have lost their life because they are dwelling on forgiveness. See, unforgiveness can, make, can drive you crazy. Unforgiveness can drive you crazy. Bitterness can drive you crazy. Can drive you crazy and make you to do things you are not supposed to, to do. You understand that? So God wants us to live, follow peace. God wants us to follow peace. God wants us to, God wants us to be able to pray and he will hear us. God is not interested in not answering somebody's prayer. He wants us to call. He says, if you call, if when we call, he will answer. He says, call upon me in the days of your trouble. So God is waiting for us to call upon him. God is interested in helping us. But at the same time, he will not he wants us to pray because there are rules to prayers. He wants us to pray according to the rules. And if you don't pray according to the rule, then you are going to be the hindrance to your own prayer. Not that God is not willing to hear or answer. The Bible says if we pray according to his will, and according to the rule of praying, then God will hear you, God will answer us. So it doesn't matter what somebody has done to you, or it doesn't matter what they have said. Because there will always be opportunity for you to hear what somebody said, what somebody did. You know, not everybody will like and not everybody will speak good of you. So whether you hear what, whether they say something evil about you or they did something behind that is not right, no matter what it is, child of God, you know the enemy will be setting you up for a bigger problem. So you have to be wise. And that is why God said we should pray that he leads us not into temptation to walk in unforgiveness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. So God wants us to follow peace with all men and holiness. You know, because living a life of forgiveness, like I said, we bring you to the place of peace with yourself, with God, and with people. And God wants us to follow peace and holiness with all men. He said, without which no man shall see God. 
Now, without peace with all men and holiness, you will not be able to experience the power of God in your life. You will not be able to experience the, the grace of God upon your life. You will not be able to experience the blessings of God in your life. Because you are blocked the channel. Unforgiveness will block the channel, the pipe of the blessing. I'll be bringing blessing into your life. Unforgiveness is a sin. Let's put this, the long and short of it is that unforgiveness is a sin. But many times we don't look at it that way. We don't think that it's a sin. We may be thinking, no, fornication, adultery, stealing, you know, killing. Those are the sins. But listen to me, child of God. Unforgiveness is a sin. And it can separate you from God, making him not to hear you when you pray. And it can also stop your deliverance. Remember the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. He said, Behold, the hand of the Lord, the Lord's hand is not short or shortened that he cannot save. The Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is he heavy that he cannot save. But your iniquities, your sin, has separated between you and your God. Has separated between you and your God. Remember the scripture say in Mark 11. He said, When you stand praying, you know, then forgive. So that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. When you stand praying, when you stand praying, when you stand praying, when you are praying, make sure there is no forgiveness in your heart. Otherwise, God will not forgive you. And if God doesn't forgive you, of course, your prayers will not be heard. And the hand of the Lord also will not come into, into, into force, you know, in your, in your situation to deliver you. You know, he said, he said, he said, he said, well, but your sin and iniquity has separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid this face from you. Did you see that now? Your sins, which is unforgiveness in this case, have hid this face from you that he will not hear. May God help you to purge yourself of every spirit of unforgiveness. If there's any unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody, you know, the, the, the irony is that. Sometimes, if you really set your heart, you discover that there may have been people who offended you while you were in the village or while you were in primary school. And then you have kept it, you have been out of touch with the people. You know? And sometimes when you hear the name of the person or they talk about the person, that spirit of unforgiveness that you have kept towards that person suddenly rises. Listen to me, child of God. If there are people like that in your life that have hurt you many years ago, it's time to let go. Call them by name. You know, and if it is possible, you can even call them on the phone. Thank God for mobile phones today. You don't need to go travel to go meet with them. You call them on the phone and just say hello. The guy will be so shocked. Ah, this guy that has not been, you know, greeting me. And when I, you know, calling me today, the guy will say, Well, I just want to say hello to you, period. You don't need to really, I mean, it's not that because you want to be at peace with all men or you are not working in the unforgiveness that everybody will be your friend. It's just to make sure there is no bitterness in your heart or malice in your heart towards people. You know, but when there is peace, when you have peace in your heart towards everybody, you can be on your own if you choose. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to go to people's house to go and sit down and say, yeah, because we are friends or we are working in peace. I could, no, 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 no. Everybody doesn't have to be your friend. Amen. You have to love all men, but you don't have to like all men. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the wisdom of God. Now, so the scripture says that if you will love life, hear this. If you will love life and want to see good days, you know that what you want to have long life. You know, like every sometimes you hear somebody say, I wish you long life and prosperity. <laughs> long life and the person you are wishing long life and prosperity may be dwelling in unforgiveness and bitterness. There is no amount of wish that that time that is going to make what your wish come to pass in the person's life. Do you understand that? So now look at the scripture. He said, if you, will love, if you will love life, if you will love life, and I want to believe that you love life, I love life, and you want to see good days, you want to see good days, like you say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You want to see good days, and then you also want to enjoy long life. You okay? Now, the scripture said you should seek peace and pursue it. Follow peace, pursue peace. It didn't say, it didn't say walk towards peace. It said, pursue peace and grab peace. Psalm 34, verses 12 to 14. He said, what man is he that desireth life? What man is he that, that desires to have life? 
and loveth many days, loveth many days, long life, that he may see good, that he may see good, that like we say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Verse 13, he said what? Keep thy tongue from evil, that is, don't speak evil, whether about somebody or don't speak evil, okay? And thy lips from speaking God. Now, verse 14 says, Depart from evil, do good, seek peace. That's where we're coming. He says, seek peace. Seek peace and pursue it. Pursue peace. Pursue peace. God said, do what? Follow peace with all men. You want to see long life. You want to enjoy long life. You want to see good days. You want that your the grace, goodness, and mercy should follow you, should follow us on child of God. Pursue peace, follow peace, you run after peace, and hold on to peace. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Look at First Peter, New Testament, because many times you see some people, when you show scripture, they tell you, oh, but that is Old Testament. Now, <laughs> New Testament. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11. He said, for he that will love life, the same scripture, he that will love life and see good days, you love life, you want to see good days, good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil. Stop talking nonsense. Stop gossiping. Stop talking rubbish. Stop getting involved in some of those carnal and ungodly jesting and then uh, whatever. He said, let him what? Let him what? Look at it. He that will not let him what? Refrain his tongue from evil and his lip that they speak no God. Verse 11. Let him eschew evil. In other words, let him depart from evil. Uh, depart from evil. And do good. And do good. Let him seek peace. Seek peace. That is, look for peace. To seek means to look for. Look for peace and ensue it. Pursue it. Pursue it. The scripture says, Blessed are the peacemakers. He said, They shall be called the children of God because our God is the God of peace. Peace is very important. Oh, forgiveness is very important. Forgiveness, like I said, is very powerful. You can't be walking in forgiveness. You see, you, when you have peace in your heart, you may not have money because the truth of the matter is that money cannot buy peace and the thing that will give, bring you to this state of peace is when you dwell in forgiveness nothing you don't have bitterness against anybody you know you don't have unforgiveness you are not keeping you are not you are not, you are not keeping malice with anybody you know you are dwelling in peace listen to me if you drink ordinary water in the state of peace that water will be as though you are you have eaten a five course meal a five course meal why? Because the peace of God in your heart, don't forget, the scripture says that a broken heart, bitterness in the heart, would bring about broken heart. He said, He dried the bones. He dried, He said, But a cheerful countenance, a cheerful countenance, do it good like medicine. Did you see that? He do it good like medicine. A cheerful countenance. Do it good. So when you are cheerful with people, you are not bitter against someone, you are not keeping malice with someone, you are not working on forgiveness, child of God. Is, you are taking you are taking medicine already. You are taking medicine for what? Medicine for sound health. Forgiveness, therefore, is medicine. Forgiveness is medicine to a good health. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know that? Let me say that. I think I said that sometime last week. But, child of God, do you know that when members of a household, members of a family, are quarreling and living in strife and unforgiveness and bitterness and malice, you know, they don't know that family, members of that family, they don't know that they are creating an atmosphere of confusion in that home which the enemy needs to carry out his evil desire, which is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When people in a house, like you see maybe brother and sister, father and mother, all of those stuff, 
When people are bitter against him, I hope he did this thing to me. He took my shoe, he took my clothes, he wore it without my permission, you know, and all those ones. He didn't greet me, he didn't do this. You disobeyed your father, your father is angry with you, mother, all of those stuff. And someone is bitter, oh, mommy is angry with daddy because daddy did not put money or did do something that mommy, daddy is angry with mommy because they, you know, they don't know they are creating an atmosphere of confusion. An atmosphere of strife that will give the devils the opportunity to operate against that family, to oppress that family. And the devil can, I mean, with such environment, <laughs> such environment through child of God, attracts problems, sickness, affliction, disappointment, financial problems. So you find some people, some families, you know, every day they tell you, ah, we don't know what is happening. Or maybe a contract is coming, the job is coming. And suddenly something stops the job, something stops the contract, something stops the blessing. They don't know that the, the enemy has used them to create the opportunity to be able to what? To stop their blessing from coming. They don't know that. Remember the scriptures in the book of Revelation, it says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Satan accuses the brethren. Satan always wants to find reason to tell God, why do you want to bless this one? You see? You see, you, you cast me out from heaven because of pride. You cast me out from heaven because of sin. This one also is dwelling in sin. So why? And not only that, the devil, when you live in such a situation, you give the devil room to go stop your blessing from coming down. Even if God in his mercy releases your blessing, Satan will not do what? Have opportunity to stand on the road. You know, remember the story of... Uh, 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 Joshua, the high priest, that he was put on a filthy garment, a filthy garment, and the, as he was standing to minister, the Bible says Satan was standing by him to resist him. You understand that? So don't give the devil any opportunity to resist you. The devil is very crafty. The devil can use somebody around you to stir up anger in you, to stir up bitterness in you, and when you are in that state, and thinking you are claiming right, child of God, you are open the door for Satan to do what to resist you. May God help you. Look at the look at the scripture, James chapter three, verse fourteen to sixteen. He said, "But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not. It's not trying to rejoice about. You may be right. That is true. You may be right. You may be right. The person may have done you wrong or said something evil about you. You may be bad. This is it's not every time you claim right. Not every time. Child of God, not every time. Not every time. You let go. The Bible talks about allowing yourself to be defrauded. Allowing yourself to... Sometimes just allow yourself to be defrauded. Yes. Allow yourself. Yes. Okay, the person is wrong and the person doesn't want to... The person doesn't want to, to, to own to, to, to his uh, fault or whatever. No problem. Okay? Let the person go. Because it is not about the person, it is you that the enemy is after. To cause you to put you in the state of bitterness or anger or malice. You know? So that the devil will continue to do or achieve what he has planned to do. No. He said what? He said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not. Lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above. It is what? Earthly sensual and devilish for where envy and strife is where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work there is confusion where envy and strife is the atmosphere has been created for evil work for satan to do what he wants to do child of god the bible says give the devil no room so you should not give the devil any room by walking in unforgiveness or being bitter against somebody. You know, like I said uh, uh, last time, you find people coming to church, they are bitter against their pastor. They have unforgiveness, and then you are expecting that the prayer that God is the pastor is going to pray will benefit. It can't benefit you. Or you are coming to church, you are bitter against a sister or a brother in the church. Oh, the sister is sitting there. I'm not going to sit there. I'm going to go to that place. You know, and you are coming to inside the church. I mean, may God help us. May God help us. Unforgiveness is a big problem. Make sure you don't keep bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart. You can't come to church, you can't come to fellowship, and you want God to bless you. 
and then you are you hate somebody in the church. <laughs> May God have mercy. May God have mercy. Now look at the scripture. The scripture says that the kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand, or a heart that is divided against itself shall fall. So we're talking about division. We're talking about unforgiveness, bitterness in a home, in a family. You understand my point? Matthew chapter Matthew chapter twelve verse twenty five. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Every house divided against itself shall not stand. Every person is doing his own thing in the house. Papa will not eat a, mama, a mommy's food. Mommy will not cook for daddy because she's angry. Somebody will not wash anything because they are angry. Listen, you are causing problem in that family. The blessing that God already has packaged for that family will stop on the way because there is atmosphere of confusion in that place. Do you understand that? Every house where that is divided, where there is con there is confusion, there there is confusion. He said it will not stand. It will not stand. Your sister did something to you, your brother did something to you. Oh, you are bitter. Oh, you don't know what he did. He took my money. Okay? He didn't tell me. And listen, <laughs> listen, don't allow the enemy to set you up. You understand my point? Be wise. Be wise. Mark chapter 3, verse 25. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. You hear that? If a house, a house, a family is divided against itself. He said that house cannot stand. It can't stand. It can't stand. So I'm advising, I'm encouraging every family hearing this message. That if there is bitterness, striving, malice among members of the family, better than settle it. Better settle yourself before you open, before the devil do what he wants to do that none of you, in fact, that you will regret about. Do you understand my point? Do you understand my point? This is why, you know, we should resist the temptation, resist the temptation to dwell in unforgiveness or bitterness or malice towards what, particularly towards the members of your household. Because when you are dwelling in unforgiveness or bitterness or malice, you are not only creating opportunity for the devil to harm you or that you are not making, making an opportunity, creating opportunity so that God will not hear your prayer, but you are creating atmosphere for evil to come to your family. Do you understand that? You forgive. The Bible says forgive everybody. Anyone that sin against you, forgive them so that God will forgive you. If God doesn't forgive you, your prayers will not be answered. Hallelujah. So I'm saying tonight, by the grace of God, let there be no unforgiveness between husband towards a wife or wife towards husband if you are a husband, if you are a wife, forgive your wife, please. Forgive your husband, no matter what they have done. No matter, forgive, please. <laughs> forgive. Whatever they have done, whatever this person has done or the other person has done, cannot be compared to what was done to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet he prayed that God should forgive the people. God should forgive us. Hallelujah. Amen. Fathers should forgive their children. Fathers, forgive your children. No matter what they have done, forgive them. Do you understand? Don't be bitter against your children. Mothers, forgive your children. Mothers, forgive your children. Children, forgive your daddy. Oh, daddy beat me. You know there are some children, and I don't know why your child self will even be working on forgiveness or bitterness towards the father. My daddy beat me. Therefore, daddy will call you to come and do something. Say, I'm not doing it, or you can't hide. <laughs> you are hurting yourself. <laughs> Better forgive your daddy. Better forgive your mommy. No matter what they did to you, even if they flogged you, even if they, they beat you, even if they, they whatever, forgive them. You understand my point? And free yourself. Free yourself. Free any other member of the family. Anybody living in that household, that household that had done something wrong to you, forgive them. Forgive them. Do you understand that? So that there will be no room for Satan to operate in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be love and peace and unity in the family so that the blessings of God will be attracted. Blessing, good, you know, prosperity, sound health will be attracted. And that should be the portion of every member of the family. You know, so create room.
create the atmosphere that will attract, you know, blessings. Do you know that some, let me say this, you know, sometimes you'll find out that when husband and wife, they're also quarreling, and then maybe they are looking for fruit of the womb or whatever. Do you know that that bitterness can hinder conception? That quarrel can hinder conception. Because children don't want to come in an atmosphere in a home where there is quarrel and bitterness and fighting. And even when there is pregnancy, those are the things that cause problems during childbirth. Childbirth, you know, that cause miscarriages, that cause, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, child mortality, you know. So, what I mean is, what, what I, mean, I mean, the child dying at birth or whatever, mother dying at childbirth, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to. You can't, you can't be pregnant and you are going to the labor room and you are bitter against your husband. Don't endanger yourself. Don't create room for the devil to, 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 to cut short your life. Do you understand that? Because people are very funny. You know, you are in the labor room, you are pregnant. You say because your husband did this one, you are carrying bitterness in your heart to, to the labor, to the hospital. <laughs> better, better, better just advise yourself. You understand my point? And you husband, you are going for an employment, you are going for a job, you are bitter against your wife. You don't want to be taken in that job. You don't want to, you don't want to be given that contract. You understand my point? There are certain things that create that cause disappointment and bitterness, unforgiveness, all these things are some of those things. May God help us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 and to 21. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Wives, submit yourself. He didn't say submit yourself when he gives you money. He didn't say submit yourself, you know, when he kisses you or when he does something good to you. There's no, he just says submit as it is fit in the Lord. Submit is submit. You know, there is, there is, there is no condition. You know, it doesn't have to satisfy certain conditions before you submit to him. You understand my point? Submit to him as it is fit. Submit to him as in obeying the Lord's commandments. As in obeying the law. Because God you said it, even though it's like, like if you want, if you, if you want to help yourself, you say, God, don't like Peter, say, Master, we are toiled all night and we didn't catch anything. In other words, we know the water, there is no need for us. He said, But at your word, never do at your word, we will pull our the boat out and now so if you want to do that say oh uh, i didn't want to submit to you but it's just because of the word of god and so submit it doesn't matter just submit the most important thing is you are submitted <laughs> whether you are submitting whether by force or by fire you, you most important that you are submitting because of your obedience to the word of god now why submit yourself to your husband as it is fit in the law husbands love your wives love your wives and be not bitter against them. Don't be bitter against them. Children. Now, husband also, it's not that my wife, I'm loving my wife. You don't, there's no condition. The love that God is talking about is your unconditional love. Amen. Now, children, obey your parents in all things. Obey your parents. So it's not only, you don't only obey when they buy something for you or when they do something good for you. No, obey in all things. Children. Don't take, don't take things for granted and say, ah, because my daddy did this to me, my mommy did this to me, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to watch the play because they beat me, I'm not going to go to that, I won't go to that every because something, no. Obey your parents because the Bible says what? This is what? It is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. You understand that? All of this, he said, let's be discouraged. All of this, if everybody will play his part in obedience to God's commandment, what are going to have in our home is peace. It's an atmosphere of peace. So what God is saying here is that all the commandments God has given to father, to, mother, to wife, to, to father, to parents, to children, is so that there will be peace in the house. So that the atmosphere will be created for blessings to come unhindered. Now look at 1 Peter chapter 3. Just one verse. Likewise, you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heads together of the grace of God, that your prayers be not hindered. Did you see that? That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. So, unforgiveness, bitterness, malice, all these things can create problem in a family. So we, God, God wants to bless us, child of God. 
God wants to take you to the new level of glory. Anything like bitterness, unforgiveness that will hinder the manifestation of God's blessing or glory in your life, child of God, this is a time to get rid of them and clear the way for your blessings to come. And I believe your blessings on the way. Nothing should stop your blessing from coming in. Don't be a hindrance to your own blessing. Don't be a hindrance to your own promotion. Don't be a hindrance to your own elevation. Because God is about to elevate you. God is about to lead you higher to a new level of glory. That his name alone be glorified in your life. God doesn't delight. God doesn't take joy when things are not working well for you. God is not interested in killing you. God is not interested in making you sick. Amen. Child of God, listen to me. Follow God's word. Keep on forgiving bitterness, all of these things out of your life, and it shall be well with you. It is my prayer that the Spirit of the Lord will help you to be merciful. Let the Spirit of the Lord help you to be forgiving, to be forgiving, and to also to, to forgive people and also to be forgiven. You know, because many times, you know, like I said, we have seen that before. We always say what people are what people are doing to us. We don't talk about what we have done to people. We don't talk about what we have done to people. We only talk about what he did to me. You don't talk about what you did to them. Do you understand that? <laughs> you know. So God wants us to forgive people so that we also can be forgiven. Amen. So may God help us. To be to show mercy or be merciful to one another and for and, and forgive those that, that that harm us or hurt us or offend us and also that we also be forgiven because sometimes it's not that you it's not that you intentionally go out there to say I want to hurt this person I want to I want to I want to make this person and you may not say it intentionally but sometimes the words we speak you know Someone may not like the way you made a statement. Someone may not like the way you are, you are you're walking mistakenly. You step on somebody's toe. You didn't intentionally do it. You know, you expect such a person to also forgive you. You, you understand my point? So, some of those things. So, may God give us that grace to show mercy, forgiving people, and also to receive forgiveness when we help people so that we can be at peace with all men according to the will of God in Jesus' mighty name. Brethren, know that what you sow, listen to me, what you sow is what you reap. What you give is what shall be given back to you. Therefore, forgive as I'll be forgiving you. That is why if you give forgiveness, <laughs> you will also receive forgiveness. If you give forgiveness, you receive forgiveness. If you don't forgive, be sure that God, first of all, will not forgive you. If you don't forgive, God, first of all, will not forgive you. Luke chapter 6, verse 36 and 37 judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned forgive and you shall also be forgiven forgive and you shall not be forgiven so if you don't forgive what will happen of course you will not be forgiven so learn to forgive learn to forgive learn to give up you understand my point learn to forgive people you know the devil always set you or the devil always want to be able to get you angry <laughs> you know in fact, I think these are the days that we we'll begin to learn to develop this king against some people's attitude. Because Satan will just package somebody and say, go and offend him. Go and offend him. You know? So we need to develop this king so that no matter what the person is doing, in fact, will just be running off of our skin, off your skin. In the same point, you just look at the people and even ignore them. <laughs> in the same point, because there are some people that their mandate from hell is to make you angry, to make you bitter, to make you, you know, oh my God, may God deliver such people. And that is why God also tell, say we should pray that he leads us not into temptation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God. Amen. Child of God, may the Lord deliver you, okay, from whatever problem that was attracted into your life or family because of unforgiveness. You know, there are problems that unforgiveness and bitterness will have attracted. You understand my point? But whatever that problem is, may the Lord have mercy upon you, upon your family, and deliver that family, deliver your family, and deliver you from that, those challenges or those problems. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord, may the Lord give you grace. You understand my point? The God give you grace to, for, to release people, to release the people that have to hurt you. Release them. Child of God, release them. Everyone, like I said, can call them and say, listen, you know, I got called to say hello to you, you know.
But if you have me to say that thing you did to me that day, that you know, I decide to forgive, I put it behind me. So, so how are you? You understand my point? Praise the Lord. So may the Lord give you grace to release the people. And every problem, whether poverty or sickness or disease, whatever the enemy are taking advantage of that situation of unforgiveness and bitterness will bring upon your life or your family as you forgive, as you remove unforgiveness and bitterness from your life. May the Lord destroy every work of darkness in that family, in your life. May the Lord bring healing into your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every door of blessing I was shut against your life because of unforgiveness or bitterness. Child of God, may the doors be open tonight. As you open up your heart and release and begin to live in forgiveness, forgive, release yourself. May the doors be open, the doors of blessings, doors of healings, doors of favors that were shut against you or against your family, may they be open right now. Doors of promotion, may they be open right now. Yes, doors of progress, may they be open right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every door, every door of blessing that was to be usher in prosperity, joy, favor, increase. You understand my point? You know, fruitfulness of the womb. Every door that was shut because of unforgiveness and bitterness, I command the doors to be open right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord forgive you. The Lord forgive you. The Lord deliver you. You know, deliver your husband, your wife, the children. The Lord deliver everyone from that sin of unforgiveness. Yes, anywhere unforgiveness or bitterness has had a root in your life. The Lord put out tonight. I command that root to wither up. I command it to dry up. I command it to die in Jesus' mighty name. I declare freedom upon your life. I declare the peace of God upon your heart. You may have been hot. You are feeling hot. Pain. The peace of God come and take over your heart. The peace of God come and reign in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, I say thank you. I give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, as we come to the end of this minute, I want to begin to talk to God. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. If you know there was someone, release, your, release the person. Tell God, Father, I release this person. I release this person that hurt me. Whether it's, it's like 20 years or 30 years ago. You know there are some families today. They are quarreling. Some families have been in quarrel. Have been fighting another family. For decades, generation quarrel have been transferred from one generation to the other. It was your grandfather that started the problem. This time, don't greet that family. Be the child. You are the child of God now. Don't let anybody in your, from your great-grandfather carry problem into your life. And then you begin to dwell and follow them. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Remember the scripture said that? He said, let any, let the root of bitterness define many. Don't be defined because of the bitterness or quarrel between your grandfather or your great-grandfather and the another person's grandfather. And don't allow any of that, anything between your family and another family to dwell in your heart today, to make you to dwell in unforgiveness. Oh, my family don't greet their family. Oh, my, my, we don't talk to that, their family. No, child of God, you are not a child of God. Lord that God. Bless your heart tonight. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Let God give you the grace to purge your heart of such attitude and such depth of, of bitterness so that you can be free and be who God wants you to be. Child of God, begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. As you pray, may the Lord hear you. 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 Father, Lord, I say, hear your children as they pray, as they release themselves, yes, from the spirit of bitterness and unforgiveness and malice. My God, give them the grace to be healed in their hearts. Whatever hurt, pain that that situation has caused in their life, my God, let there be healing tonight. Let there be healing tonight. Yes, yeah, somebody would have jilted a sister or a, a, a brother. You know, somebody disappointed you, made a promise, and they disappoint. And because of that, they have been feeling hurt. Listen to me. Release the person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Release the person. Release the person. Release the person. Because the one God that packaged and prepared for you will come. That bitterness I've been dwelling in may stop the blessing from coming. Release the person tonight. Release the person and go your way. Release the person and go forward. Move on your life. Move on. Release the person and say, Father, I release this person. I release this person from my heart. I forgive him. I forgive her. Whatever they did to me. All the yes. Oh, my father, I forgive. I release. 
Forgive me, oh Lord. Papa, forgive me for keeping on forgiveness in my heart. Child of God, release the people. Release them. And be freed in your heart. Be freed in your life. God wants to bless you. God wants to turn this around for you. As you release them, child of God, blessing is locating you. I say blessing is locating you. Peace of God is going to enter into your heart tonight. I say peace of God. Child of God, peace of God that money cannot buy. Peace of God is coming to, to, to come to reign in your life. So receive that peace. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you praise and glory and honor, Lord. Thank you, Father, for answer to the prayer of your children as they repent of their unforgiveness, as they repent, oh God, of entertaining malice, as they repent, oh God, of entertaining bitterness in their heart towards someone, towards their neighbor, towards their colleague in the office, anybody. Thank you, my Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Blessed be your holy and mighty name, my God. I say, blessed be your holy name. If you have been part of this meeting tonight, you have not given your life to Jesus. Better do so now. Better do so now. Well, of course, if you have, been, if you have not been born again and you've been walking off for it, listen to me. All that in that one is not even the major sin. The sin is the sin that Adam committed. Just ask the Lord, and the blood of God is able to cleanse you from every sin. Just say, Lord, I come to you tonight. I come to you tonight. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he came from you. He went to the cross to die for me, to wash away my sin that I committed from my that he did. Every bitterness, every unforgiveness, any manner of sin I ever committed in my life. I thank you, Lord, because you put them on Jesus. I might become your righteousness in him. Tonight, I receive the gift of righteousness. I receive the gift of righteousness, Lord. I receive the gift of righteousness, and I thank you for saving me. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. And I say I will follow and I will serve you all the days of my life. I hand over everything to your hand. Let your peace reign. You are the Prince of Peace. May your peace reign in my heart. May you take charge over every area of my life. All the who offended me, who hurt me, I release them, I forgive them. So that, Lord, I receive forgiveness as well from you because of the sin I committed from Adam to today. I receive forgiveness to Nanash. You are forgiving me, so I forgive everyone, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. And so, child of God, I pray for everyone again that the Lord God Almighty visit you the Lord God Almighty meet you at your point of need right now. Every door that was shut, every path that was blocked because of unforgiveness, the Lord God Almighty open them as you release the people. The Lord forgive you as well as you are forgiving everybody. The Lord forgive you as well and the Lord bring his peace into your life and the Lord cause his blessing to begin to manifest in your life. That long life you are looking for, you trust God, you believe God for, may the Lord satisfy you with long life. May the Lord satisfy you with long life. May the Lord give you, to make you to see good days. Good days, not days of evil, not days of sickness, but good days in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless your going out and your coming in. The Lord grant you great peace and favor before all men. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The things, the blessings you are looking for, may the Lord grant that they begin to locate you. May the favor and the blessing of God locate you. Because the doors are, are clear. The, the ways are clear. Because bitterness has been taken out of the way. So the Lord grant that your blessing locate you wherever you are. Receive your healing tonight. Receive peace tonight. Receive, 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 receive strength tonight. Receive joy tonight in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bless save your holy and mighty name of God for that which you have done in the life of everyone that have heard this message. And Lord, you have heard our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you have been blessed tonight. I have been blessed tonight. Personally, I have been blessed tonight. And I thank God for blessing us. I thank God for, for, for giving us that grace to release people tonight. It's not by power. It's not by might. But the Spirit of the Lord. Amen and amen. So this is what the Lord has for us tonight. I want to encourage you, child of God, make sure you, 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 you live a life of forgiveness. Cultivate, maintain the heart of forgiveness. Guard your heart. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Don't allow bitterness or forgiveness to have their way at all into your life. May you may be sure that you walk in, you live in peace with all men. A amen. Amen, child of God. May the Lord bless you. I want to encourage you on Sunday by 9 o'clock in the morning. In fact, this Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. 
join us if you are in Lagos. Come worship with us. The address of the church is there, you know. And if, 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 if you are not in Lagos, join us online nine o'clock. Grace World Ministries, you know. You of course you 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 you, you already have uh, the 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 login uh, uh, the, 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 uh, password or the or the uh, the login uh, the, the information details. So I encourage you to be part of all this Sunday. I assure you that you are not going to come and go home the way you came. God will bless you. God will touch you in a special way. And come expecting. Come by faith. Come by faith. Because we are not worshipping a dead God. He said he that cometh to God more believe that he is. So come believing that God is where we are gathering together unto him. And God will grant that your coming will not be in vain in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, the light of God will shine upon you. So I call you to be with us on Sunday by 9 o'clock. Coming Wednesday, child of God, be part of this uh, meeting again. Wednesday, next week, 7, uh, uh, 7 p.m. Not like today. If you're outside the country connecting with us, okay, mark, mark your time. Mark your time. Same time, 7 o'clock, Nigerian time. Mark it there, you know, and be part of the meeting and God will bless you. You know, wherever you are, whether in Europe, in America, in Asia, you know, God will bless you and always inform people. In fact, just press your notification bell so that when we're about to start, your notification bell will remind you that it is time for the meeting, the meeting is about to start, the meeting is about to start. And child of God, God will bless you as you be part of these meetings in Jesus' mighty name. Now, before we leave, I want to encourage you to make sure you sow. So online, if and the church can go to the church and drop your offering, you know, we are can't we can't pay what God has done for you tonight. Money can't buy it. You understand my point? Money can't buy it. But I just encourage you to give. So I pray for you as you give. May the Lord receive your offering. May the Lord receive your offering. That seed you are sowing into the work of God. May the Lord receive it and command it to grow. May the Lord bless it. May the Lord water it. May it bring forth hundredfold back to you in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord give you durable riches. The Lord our God who is interested, who takes pleasure. He takes pleasure in your prosperity because the word of God says that it is the will of God for you to prosper and be in health. The Lord grant that indeed you prosper in your life and you enjoy good health, no sickness, no disease, and you enjoy long life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord rebuke the devour on your behalf. The Lord command his blessings upon the work of your hand. The Lord give you favor in your place of work. The Lord give you favor in your market, in your business environment. The Lord rebuke the devils and cast them out from around you in Jesus' mighty name. Your going out and your coming in this shall be marked with blessing. These are the ember months. These are the last two months of the year. Child of God, by the grace of God, you have entered the year 2022. You will not die prematurely. As you go from today, throughout this month of November, throughout the month of December, and the Lord will bring you safely to the end of the year, 2021, and usher you powerfully, gloriously, prosperously, joyfully, peacefully into the year 2022. The wicked one will not see you. The Lord cover you with his glory. Anywhere somebody is thinking evil about you, planning to make sure that you don't see good in this year, the Lord disappoint them. The Lord return their curse upon their head. Because the Lord that bless you, child of God, nobody will curse you. All of those who are trying to cause you are causing their cause to return back upon their head in Jesus' mighty name. You will go out in peace and return back in peace. This month of November shall be a month of blessing unto you. It shall be a month of fruitfulness unto you, a month of favor unto you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I say thank you. I give you praise and glory, Lord, for bringing, yes, into the hand of your children for the sake of your work. Yes, the treasures of darkness, the hidden your secret places. Child of God, this season may you receive wisdom. Wisdom for creative invention, wisdom for business, wisdom that will give you wisdom for such ideas that will have you will know what to do to, to bring money into your life in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless your head. The Lord bless your mind. The Lord bless your home. The peace of God reign in your home. Every home there will bitterness and unforgiveness because you are repentant and, 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 and confess those sins before the Lord. The Lord usher in great peace. The peace of God come to reign in your home. Child of God, you have heard this message and know not everybody in your family heard this and you know there is bitterness and unforgiveness amongst some people in your home. Share this message with them. Share this message with them and let them know that that door that was open to Satan will be shut tonight. And as they shut the door, may the glory of the Lord fill your home. May the peace of God reign in your home. 
In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. God bless you and see you next Sunday. That's right, next Sunday by 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. By 9 o'clock in the morning. I remain your pastor, Newton Danila. Until then, stay blessed. Stay in peace with all men. Hallelujah. Stay safe and stay rapturable. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Wherever you are, have a wonderful night tonight if you're in Nigeria. Hallelujah. See you then. Bye.